My working hypothesis for this course is that movement which appears to emanate from a body will be perceived as intentional. And I think that stems from two facts. One is we are very skilled at perceiving physics. We watch things fall down and uh, humans and, and animals take actions in the world and have some understanding of how physical movements relate to uh, underlying intent. And then we have habits of ascribing intent to all sorts of processes. If we see something as, as purposeful, we will think of it as having goals and intelligence, even if it in reality is actually quite a simple underlying process. A different way of seeing this is that it's a way of looking at robotics as a science of dealing with a messy, imprecise world. Oftentimes, robots are thought of in factory contexts where it's about precision, repeatability, and lifespan, and machines as essentially advanced machine tools. But much of research robotics is, much, is concerned with robots moving into natural spaces or human spaces where there isn't the kind of consistency. And so the messiness of the real world, the unpredictability, naturally plays a role in the kind of variation of the robot behavior and action. It becomes a much harder programming problem in that the robot has to sense or respond to a much greater variety of stimuli, but, as, but then as, as an outcome uh, can produce a lot richer behavior. So these hypotheses can naturally lead to some approaches for making kinetic sculptures. The first is that it's possible to get beyond fixed choreography. Oftentimes in uh, theater, uh, someone perceives a performance once, and so they don't understand whether it would be different a second time. And that's very true, obviously, in animation and cinema. So in these contexts, especially animation, it's possible to very finely tune the movement of characters and or graphics in order to get a, a highly tuned outcome um, as per the artist's intentions. But once you're working with a robot that can potentially fail or interact with surprising things in the world, especially in a kind of gallery context where um, it might work for a very long time or act in, uh, in a variety of circumstances, then it's important to think more about what are the what kind of the general response and general programming of the machine uh, to produce a sort of ongoing lifelike process that reveals the artistic intent. I think that can be as simple as simple feedback. Even a, a simple device with a motor or two, which is having some kind of process where it measures the world and reacts to it either to regulate its own state or control some kind of state in the world, um, often is seen as intentional, even if it can actually be described with some relatively simple programming or very simple circuitry or equations. Then that's actually, I think, as much a testament to the human ability to perceive goals and intentionality in something, even if it's quite simple. Perhaps the question would be to build machines with ambiguous intent. Once you start shaping reactions of machines in their environment, then this question of whether it's completely legible or there is a deliberate ambiguity to what's, what's taking place, um, that can be a, a sort of ripe artistic question. You can build machines that uh, interact with the world uh, or people. Um, by world, in this case, I keep meaning kind of environment or people, things that are outside the body of the robot. Of course, the robot is kind of a slippery idea in that we, we build these systems where the boundaries are not so specific. We tend to put a box around the robot as a thing. But of course, it exists in a dynamic space of whatever happens to be around it. And the behavior of, of what happens, the sort of underlying like performance, is as much a product of everything in the vicinity as it is the robot itself. So truly, the system is always larger than the robot. Perhaps another question is whether you could build a machine that is just erratic or occasionally unresponsive. I would hazard that a machine which fails deliberately or fails occasionally or appears to have somewhat random behavior will often be seen as more mysterious and uh, having more intentionality um, than is even warranted. Um, machines which fail in interesting ways are, I think, generally more interesting than machines that always work. I think an ongoing question that we'll face is simply once you start to master creating these illusions kind of of life and agency is how can you attach that to uh, conveying some artistic idea if and that will that's just a question that we'll have to sort of face as we go by looking at examples my own personal experience with this started with building hopping robots in that the machines were very technical they were designed to explore legged locomotion and, and bouncing on on legs and were not especially aesthetic or designed to have any kind of character. But when they started to move, I always felt that they 
adopted a very different mode. They kind of came alive. Like this, the sheer act of having this metal thing that would be sort of bouncing across the ground um, immediately evoked kind of animal nature. We see in the machine on its leg some kind of evocation of, of what we understand as like intentional navigation across the world. Even if the machines in some sense were quite simple and mostly feedback driven machines, um, but using this physical behavior of the leg and, and the ground um, could evoke quite a bit more than they had. Just to close here, once you start creating intentionality, you have this question of agency. This is actually endemic through ro robotics. We build robots that have complicated behaviors and the, the authors, the programmers and engineers who make them um, embed all sorts of assumptions about the world and assumptions about behavior um, into that robot, which then may be revealed at some later date. When you actually see the robot moving and doing something, those authors are often quite remote. It's a hidden agency where intentionality has been embedded into the machine in some way to be revealed or not. So there's always a question when looking at a robot, which is, what is the intention, not of the sort of expressed goals of the robot, but of the people who created it? And what kind of hidden agency is, is there to be used? And as artists, that's something that can be then manipulated. There can be behaviors which reveal themselves at a later date or only under certain circumstances. And the agency can be used to kind of subvert the perceptions of the viewer in that uh, they will see some kind of intentionality only to reveal more at a, at a later date.